This is ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. We'll state in a social media network site, it could be one of the many ones that you're probably thinking of right now, post an ad stating that we are a 16-year-old female or 15-year-old, whichever one, you know, we decide to do, and just looking to hang out. That's all. Sometimes the ads just are that simple. 16-year-old female looking to hang out. Man claiming he is a teenage girl lures adult men to hook up should the public be taking the law into their own hands. Good evening everyone, I'm Alan Cohn and welcome to ABC 7 at 7 Wild. More on do-it-yourself policing in a moment, but first our top seven stories at 7. And we begin tonight with news that the death of a woman found inside a sauna at a Longboat Key moorings may be a homicide. Police are ruling out a natural or accident cause of death. There were obvious signs of trauma, leaving homicide or suicide as possibilities. The woman's name is not being released. If the death is ruled a homicide, it's a mark that the keys, it will mark the keys third in less than six months. We don't want to alarm the community, but we want them to know that we're doing everything that we can, that if this were, does in fact um, turn out to be a homicide, that we, we're not leaving any stone unturned. Chief Cummings says there isn't anything the community can do to help until they determine the woman's cause of death. An update in a Sarasota County murder case, a suspect charged in the 2011 death of a woman was back in court today. 54-year-old William Case has been charged with murder in the death of Karen Quartz. Case's attorney had previously requested a mistrial, saying his client is incompetent to stand trial. Today, a judge determined Case remains incompetent to stand trial. A psychologist says he has chronic paranoid schizophrenia. A regatta planned for September in Venice is already getting some pushback on social media. The Sarasota Scholars Youth Rowing Regatta will be held on Saturday, September 15th, but some boaters are unhappy the event will be closing off the intracoastal waterway for nearly a day. Some say the event should be held at Nathan Benderson Park and not in Venice, but others were happy to have the event and the economic benefits it might bring. I think anything to do is to celebrate and bring in people and, and, and uh, bring in some revenue to the, to the area is fantastic. The boat ramp at the Venice train depot is also slated to be closed during the regatta. A new device designed to help disabled golfers is making its way to the Sun Coast. The Paramobile can hold someone up who can't normally stand on their own. It was designed for disabled golfers, but is also used in other sports and activities like fishing and archery. A Paramobile was recently delivered to the Sun Coast Golf Center in Sarasota. The month of February is dedicated to hit and run awareness and the Florida Highway Patrol is reminding drivers to stay at the scene when involved in the crash. The goal is to reduce the number of hit and run fatalities in Florida. In 2017, there were over 98,000 accidents in Florida with 177 deaths and in a quarter of the crashes every year, a driver leaves the scene. It's a felony. The public is encouraged to report hit and runs by dialing star FHP, that's star 347. Remember during the days before Hurricane Irma how difficult it was to find gas? Now a new task force is recommending stockpiling fuel reserves around the state. The Florida Strategic Fuel Reserve Task Force will recommend a plan for the state to meet both private and public fuel needs during natural emergencies and major disasters. The nine-member task force would be appointed by the governor, the president of the Senate, and the House Speaker. During and after Irma hit Florida, drivers reported spending up to 12 hours on routes that typically are covered in six or seven hours. You saw the pictures of the highway where the highway patrol was uh, taking one side of the highway was packed back to back and then the other side was uh, moving the tankers through there uh, trying to get the fuel. Immediately before Irma, Florida Highway Patrol troopers served as escorts for tanker trucks heading towards gas stations. A new report says while the state is sp sending fewer people to prison than in the past, and those who are ending up behind bars are staying there for longer periods of time. The study from the Crime and Justice Institute says there are nearly 100,000 inmates housed in Florida prisons, and the per capita incarceration rate in the state is more than 20 percent higher than the national average. Average. Two thirds of Florida's prisoners are locked up due to nonviolent offenses. Sending low level offenders 
to prison is more likely to increase their criminal behavior. Second, longer prison terms, especially for nonviolent offenders, do not reduce recidivism more than shorter terms of incarceration. Third, treatment programs delivered in the community are more effective than treatment programs delivered in prison. Due to mandatory minimum sentences, the prison population in Florida is aging. The report suggests creating an early release option for elderly inmates who no longer pose a threat to society. Now let's head over to ABC7's Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan with the first alert forecast. Bob. Well, no threats out here. Uh, we're looking at the Van Ways of webcam. Just beautiful weather this afternoon. I hope you took advantage of it. Temperatures warming into the mid-70s, slightly above average. Gorgeous sunset tonight. Looking out over Sarasota Bay, you can see that quite clearly. The moon going to be rising here just in uh, less than uh, a half hour or so, just over a half hour from now. 64 degrees, it's clear. The dew point 53 and winds out of the north northwest at 6. The pressure rising ever so slowly, so high pressure still in control and will do so at least uh, through the day tomorrow. There is a frontal system approaching, which will bring a little bit of a change on Friday, maybe a few more clouds around, but we're not anticipating much in terms of rainfall with that. Satellite goes and uh, imagery showing this frontal boundary stretching from New York through Pennsylvania, West Virginia, all the way down into Texas tonight. That front is advancing in our direction. It's a weak cold front, not expected to really cool things down all that much. The evening forecast looks delightful. Temperatures into the upper 50s by 11 o'clock tonight. We'll have just a few clouds around. And the winds are very light out of the north northwest now. Anywhere from 5 to 10 miles an hour for the most part up and down the coast. In North Point is 5, 8 in Minnesota Beach and 7 in Venice. So a very pleasant evening. There's not a lot of moisture to work with with this front that's coming down. So our water vapor imagery is showing relatively dry conditions around right now. And we are not anticipating anything too rough with the front. And we have... Groundhog's Day tomorrow, Alan. I know that uh, that's a big deal for a lot of folks. Um, you know, and if the groundhog sees his shadow, that means six more weeks of winter. If it doesn't, then an early spring. Either way, for us, it doesn't matter. I'll no, take the winter but some weather. of us have a kid up in the Northeast who's going to college oh, and yeah. hoping it will be a little <laughs> bit warmer to play baseball. Right, and uh, hopefully, in 90% chance that he will not see his shadow, so that means an early spring. Right. But we'll see how it plays out. All right, thanks a lot, Bob. Right. And still to come, do police want the public taking the law? into their own hands. Once you get atrial fibrillation, you need to have a very close relationship with your primary doctor. Prevention is the whole ball game here because once you have a stroke, you can't undo it. A year without stroke is a year that you can enjoy doing the things that you've worked all your life to finally get to do. You took care of yourself. You did what is necessary for you to be around one more year. And then next year, we'll celebrate one more year without a stroke. Everybody can make something because I think everyone has a spark of creativity. And the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That, I think, is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. Join ABC7 at the all-new 2018 edition of Circus Sarasota. Ovation under the big top at Nathan Benderson Park behind the mall at UTC. Friday, February 9th through Sunday, March 4th. All opening weekend tickets are 20% off courtesy of ABC7. To purchase your discount tickets, visit circusarts.org, the Circus Sarasota box office at the big top, or call 941-355-9805. We answered the call of duty and left our homes to serve in far off lands. Now we answer another call, this time at home, in our own communities, to respond in times of chaos, to use our strength, our skills, and our experiences to bring hope amid devastation and destruction. Together, as a team of brothers and sisters, we're continuing our mission to make this country a little stronger and a little better each day. We are Team Rubicon. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half, nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, 
and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org. Keep up with the Suncoast. Watch your favorite ABC7 shows on your streaming device. Community policing is a term used by law enforcement to describe efforts to partner with the public to fight crime. One local man, however, has come up with his own version of community policing, but the police are not exactly embracing it. ABC 7's Jess Dowdrick joins us with more. Jess. Alan, Shane Coyle can disguise his voice to sound exactly like a teenage girl, and he uses that to his advantage. He sets up meetings with men who think they're meeting young girls. Then when Shane Coyle shows up, he blasts the men live on Facebook for the world to see. And one of those men was from Bradenton. All right, I'll be right there, sweetie. Shane Coyle sets up a meeting with a man that he met online. Watch as he shows up at McDonald's to expose him, live on his Facebook page. What's your name? I did nothing wrong. Well, I know you didn't do nothing yet. Okay. The man freaks out. Nothing. I'm not doing anything. Th is that the answer? I didn't even answer yeah. your question. But Coyle calls him out. You seem a little nervous. Why are you nervous? The man admits knowing he was meeting a 16-year-old girl but says he had no intentions on doing anything sexually with the teen. This is 16 year old as a kid. The man denies any ill will. Coyle's children are part of the reason why Coyle started this business, the ultimate decoy in the first place. Like when I'm face to face with a sexual predator, I picture my daughter who's 12 years old or my son who's four years old backed into a corner with this animal. That and the comments that Coyle sees show up on Facebook. I see this one guy and I don't want to say his name, but he was like 50 something years old and he's hitting on a 16 year old in my in my live feed. So this is what Coyle does. We'll state in a social media network site. It could be one of the many ones that you're probably thinking of right now. Post an ad stating that we are a 16 year old female or 15 year old, whichever one you know we decide to do and just looking to hang out. That's all. Sometimes the ads just are that simple. 16 year old female looking to hang out. Coyle says the responses are mind blowing. We've got 398 responses to an ad that we placed this morning just in New Tampa alone. Then Coyle and his team will contact the men and plan to meet up. Meanwhile, documenting all of the chat conversations for police. Then Coyle will confront the men who show up, documenting the encounter live on Facebook. That video he also turns over to police. So what do police think about all of this? Law enforcement is, is, is kind of a mixed good and bad for them. It's nice that citizens will report something of this going on and they can then take it from there and do it properly through the criminal justice system. When people take this type of situation in their own hands, it's very likely they could destroy somebody's life. But what Coyle is doing is a touchy subject. Law enforcement experts say there is a difference between confronting an alleged predator and entrapping them. We all agree we don't need people like this out there being predators on this, but there could be more to the story. They're not getting true justice, it's street justice if you want to call it, public shaming. And the thing is, what if they're wrong? You just ruined somebody's life. It puts the person who is doing their version of community policing in possible danger. They could also wind up facing criminal charges of their own, say if the altercation gets physical or if the person they are confronting sues them. Best I can do is suggest to people if they have suspicion of anything like this is to report it and let law enforcement work on it. But to go about to, to the point of public shaming, at some point it will backfire on, on whoever's doing it. But that's a risk Coyle is willing to take. We're going to be testifying against them. We're going to be, you know, everything that we do is also liable to be held against us. You know, we could be the reason. If we, if we mess up, we could be a reason that some guy that just devastated the mind and body of a 12-year-old of a little girl or little boy walks free and does it to another child. None of these videos have led to a court case, although Coyle suspects they will in the future. 
Coyle says he did turn the video of the man at McDonald's over to the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. There haven't been any charges, though, filed against him. According to the public information officer for the Sheriff's Office, there are no known arrests that have resulted from Coyle's videos. But as law enforcement says, it's their active duty to look into all of them. The Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office does not condone what Coyle is doing. Just thank you and coming up, Shane Coyle is here and so are some law enforcement experts. So meet me at the traffic. Choral Artists of Sarasota presents Carmina Burana in Motion. Carl Orff's choral masterpiece, Carmina Burana, bursts into life in this lavish production designed for 60 voices, three celebrated soloists, a two piano percussion ensemble, and dynamic premier choreography performed by members of Sarasota Contemporary Dance. Do not miss this lush feast of the senses. Saturday, February 3rd, 4 p.m. at Church of the Palms in Sarasota. Tickets and info are at choralartistsarasota.org or by calling 941-387-4900. Soldiers in the Army National Guard serve to give back to their country and communities. Their part-time commitment qualifies them for an array of benefits, such as affordable health and life insurance benefits, education benefits, including tuition assistance, student loan repayment and GI Bill programs, a retirement plan based on part-time service, and VA home mortgages. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more about all the benefits available in the Army National Guard. Zupan, part of the U.S. Paralympic rugby team. In my game, movement is everything. I get frustrated when my move is blocked, especially when that guy has no right to be there, even just for a minute. I love a challenge, but I don't like to play this game every day. A message from the United Spinal Association. Looking for something fun to do on a Friday night? Then come to Music on Main, the first Friday of every month at Lakewood Ranch. Enjoy free live music, dancing, great food, and lots of fun for every family member, even the furry ones. Meet up with friends, enjoy activities for the kids, or make it a special date night. And be sure to stop by the ABC7 booth and say hello. Mark your calendars for Music on Main, first Friday of the month, 6 to 9 at Lakewood Ranch. Brought to you by ABC7 and these sponsors. Welcome back. Who wouldn't want to protect our children from those who would seek them out online? As you just saw, Shane Coyle is using his uncanny ability to sound like a teenage girl to do just that, but he is not a police officer. He doesn't work in law enforcement, and it is unclear whether, even if he turns his evidence over to authorities, whether it would be admissible in a court of law. And joining us for more is Shane Coyle, Greg Arnold, professor of criminal justice at State College of Florida, and Kurt Lavarello, executive director of the School Safety Advocacy Council, and the 28-year police veteran gentleman. Welcome to you all. Ringers off on that phone, Shane. <laughs> Leave it up to the guy with ADHD, right? Right. <laughs> uh, Shane, wh how did you get the idea to do this? It, it, not to do the voices or to yeah. do the, uh, the actual Both. decoy stuff? Well, the voices came at an early age. I used to cut class all the time. I apologize, guys. Um, I used to cut class all the time. And my teacher says to me one day, Shane, if you cut class one more time, I'm going to call your mom. Now, growing up in an Italian-Irish household, you're either going to get smacked or you're going to get yelled at, one or the other, or both, majority of the time. <clears throat> I didn't want mom getting a call, and mom works during the day. So I said, you know what? Okay, no problem. I'm not going to tell them that she's at work. They don't have her work number, surprisingly. I see where this is going. Yeah. Needless to say, the next day I cut class. Day after, they call home. I run off the bus. The phone's ringing, 3.30. Hello? Hi, Shane. It's your principal. I need to speak to your mother. I never did a voice in my life, but it just came to me like that. I'm like, um, hold on, here she is. Hey, Mom? Hello? Ma, uh, here, ma hello? Hi, who is this? Ma, it's my teacher. Be quiet. It's my teacher. Shut up, Shane. Hi, how are you? Hi, Mr. Mrs. Coyle. Uh, this is your son's principal. He's been cutting class just about every other day. Oh, that stupid little dummy. 
Well, no, I wouldn't call him stupid. Oh, no, we do. We call him stupid every single night. I made him feel real bad for me, like I'm getting yelled at. And right. <laughs> he was to say, it's how I started doing and, voices. And you've been able to uh, Ever <laughs> refine it so you are sounding Absolutely. like a young girl. Yeah, I can sound like my dad, my mom, my grandmother. I mean, <laughs> you name it. <laughs> Where did you get the idea to use the voice to hunt men who may be online seeking young girls. And, and females as well. There's females that do it, believe it or not. We haven't had one, but they do exist out there. Um, predatorial, you know, nature's not of any sex whatsoever. It's uh, defining just sickness in these people's heads. But how I got the idea was I was in, I have another page it's called the Prank Call Mafia, Shane Coyle's Prank Call Mafia, where we prank call celebrities. And we prank call just individuals. And basically it's an ongoing live show on Facebook. Now, when we're live, there's a chat feed. And in that chat feed, I get to know my followers. I get to know them by first name basis and their screen name. And a lot of them, some of them straggle in there, 17, 16 years old, you know, and they're younger. And I know who the younger ones are. And I also know who the older ones are. One of my older followers noticed one of my younger followers was making certain comments and started asking where she lived, asking to, and I'm noticing this. And I'm just seeing it from the outside looking in. And, uh, you know, make a long story short, this guy, 56-year-old man, was trying to pretty much cord and groom a 16-year-old girl. And she was giving the information. So I kind of grabbed a hold of it. And I said, you know what, hold on, let me do, it. Let me do this. And I contacted him and seen what he was doing. And it just kind of sprung. And my daughter also has apps on her phone. Right. And I started taking a look at those and just seeing it's, it's heavy. Uh, while we have time in this segment, you, and you know, uh, folks, you, you saw uh, the story that we put together with Jess. What was your, uh, your, your initial, Kurt, uh, feeling when you saw it? Well, you know, in law enforcement, we appreciate when people get involved and help us meet our end goal, which is to put, as Shane said, some of these sick people behind bars, because that's where they belong. Uh, un unfortunately, you know, when, when you're utilizing an, a strategy that is to shame the person, that's not going to make that person leave that shaming and suddenly be cured of his desire to be with little boys or little girls. So there's a sickness there. And so we like to see that these cases go through the criminal justice system and the person not only winds up getting their sickness treated, but there's also a punishment that goes along with that through the system. Greg, briefly, I mean, we saw NBC, uh, Craig Larson, I, I believe, uh, became really famous around the country for doing to catch a predator. Yes. Uh, what's the difference, if, if there is any? Well, the difference is you are taking it outside of the criminal justice system to a point. And at some point in that show, they brought in law enforcement and they cooperated with them. There was a lot of, was a lot of controversy about that and how far they would go to. There's a difference between enticing and entrapment. And there's things civilians can get away with but may not be able to be, be used or by law enforcement or used in the court of law. Right. And this, that. And so you can start getting into some, a quagmire with the legality. All right. And we will be talking about that. But uh, we are just getting warmed up, and we'll have much more right after we check the first alert weather. So stay with us. This is an important announcement. If you're between 50 and 85 and worried about your loved ones, you can still get affordable life insurance for peace of mind. My life insurance coverage is guaranteed, and I was not required to get a medical exam. I had high blood pressure and diabetes, and I got my coverage with one telephone call. No exam necessary. I'm a smoker, and I wanted to take care of my family. I called to get my life insurance and my affairs in order. I wanted to do the right thing. Call Final Expense No Exam Insurance. Your rates are guaranteed and will never increase. I called and learned that this insurance cannot be canceled, even if you get sick or gain weight. And there are no restrictions on how my beneficiaries use the money when I'm gone. Approval was easy, and the price was right. I wanted to do this for my children. Call 800-738-9812. 800-738-9812.
Hi, I'm Janelle Hale, founder and CEO of the National Breast Cancer Foundation. No one should face breast cancer alone. When I was diagnosed 36 years ago, there was no internet, and I had to make a decision with little information. Early detection saved my life. It could save yours too. To learn what every woman needs to know about breast cancer, visit nbcf.org slash hope. What to expect when you're expecting a teenager. Today we're talking about how to wake up your teen, and this works literally every time. Good kisses. Good kisses. You heard how loud I, no, I heard. I heard. It wasn't you. It was the... Is that bacon? You don't have to know it all to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Our conversation on do-it-yourself policing continues in a moment, right after we get a check on the first of the forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrison. Bob. Thanks, Alan. And they keep coming. All the great pictures and photos. You know, uh, this is what we do down here in the Sun Coast. Take a look at great things like this. And this is Michael Fox, uh, Michael Cox, I should say, a Holmes Beach. You see those little oats, those sea oats there in the foreground. And, well, the weather headlines may change things up a little bit tomorrow, but we'll have increasing clouds on Friday with a chance for an isolated shower. The rain chance only at 10%. And then a warmer weekend ahead, though. We are looking for warmer temperatures than we saw last weekend. And then a few showers are possible late Sunday. Now, we had rain last Sunday. You may recall three inches and plus in Tampa. We had over an inch and a half here in the uh, Sarasota Bradenton Airport. Uh, but we'll have uh, some showers Sunday, not a lot of heavy rainfall like we saw. Satellite and radar picture showing what's going on. The very active subtropical jet stream continues to move right across north central Florida tonight with an advancing cold front headed our way. You can see that cold front uh, bringing some snowfall into southern Indiana, western portions of Kentucky earlier now into east Kentucky. Uh, that cold front stretching all the way from oh, West Virginia down through uh, parts of Mississippi and into Texas tonight. That cold front will get into our area. It looks like late tomorrow evening, bringing with it just an increase in clouds and, as I mentioned, a 10% chance for a passing shower. Looks good uh, for the events tomorrow night. 64 degrees right now. It's comfortable. Dew point is at 53, and the barometer way up there, 3016, although that will be slipping away as the front approaches. It was warm today, above average at 75, or normal high at 72. 66 in Rosedale, one degree warmer in Rosedale, I should say, Waterleaf. Now, Braden Country Club 64, a bit cooler right near the coast, 62 at Anna Maria due to that wind coming in off the uh, Gulf there, 64 in Osprey, and 66 at Laurel Oak, 69 in Northport and Rotunda, you're at 63 degrees. Well, here's the European forecast model showing that front gets down south of us on Saturday. Uh, we should see a decent day on Saturday, partly cloudy to mostly cloudy at times, but uh, not a totally sunny day, but it'll still be very nice. Temperatures will warm in the low 70s uh, to right around 70 degrees. And then you'll see this little area start to pick up here. This is an upper level low, a little piece of energy moving through the Gulf of Mexico, and on top of that, it will swing a week front our way. This is 10 a.m. on Sunday, so if you have any uh, early tea time or early, uh, looks like uh, tennis in the morning on Sunday, should be okay. Uh, according to this forecast model. But then by the afternoon, say 2, 3 o'clock, that rain starts to spread southward. But that rain chance isn't all that high right now. We'll see a few showers around, but that rain chance is only at 40%. And it looks as though better chances for Sunday night into Monday morning, snow falling once again into Ohio, Illinois, and into Indiana. Well, for boaters, tomorrow looks great out there. Winds will be uh, pretty light, 5 to 10 knots. So we'll have a light chop on the bays and in the waters. The water temperature is cool to 61 degrees. And the UV index will be a 7 tomorrow. Here's the forecast for seven days. Now, uh, tomorrow we have uh, 73, 72 on Saturday. Here comes the rain on Sunday. We'll show you another forecast model, and this is the uh, GFS. We were looking at the uh, European earlier, but this is a 40% chance for showers here. Here's the GFS, and this will come in a little later. You'll see that as we move through time. This is Sunday. Uh, again, this is Sunday at 11 o'clock, and then uh, not even here yet, and here it is 4 o'clock. So uh, we'll see how it plays out right now. I think the latter will be the more reliable model. So uh, the rest of the forecast are calling for temperatures to stay warm right through Thursday of next week. Alan will be back with his guests right after this. Stick around. Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. 
The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. Call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. For more than 100 years, American Humane Association has been teaching kids to be kind to animals. Those in our homes, on the farms, on the silver screen, and wildlife conservation caring for the world's vanishing creatures. But we can't do it alone. Visit kindness100.org to find ways to teach kids how they can make a more caring, compassionate, and humane world for all of us. There was this big bruise on my friend's face. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to think her own nephew could have hit her. I didn't want to see it. My mother's bank account was emptied, and a caregiver had taken control of it. I didn't want to see it. My father's refrigerator. There was hardly anything in it. That's unusual for him. It's tough to see that a senior citizen is being abused, physically, emotionally, sexually, or financially. Elder abuse is a crime. So see the signs. Stop the crimes. I witnessed him have two heart attacks in ICU. He went through seizures. We'd much rather have Aaron like this than dead. A lot of parents don't have that luxury. He can't talk. He can't walk. This is a condition Aaron will live with for the rest of his life because he abused prescription pills. Mind your meds. Learn more from the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids. Welcome back. A local man on his own crusade to get pedophiles off the street. Good idea or not so much. Joining us for more is Shane Coyle, Greg Arnold, professor of criminal justice at State College of Florida, and Kurt Lavarello, executive director of the School Safety Advocacy Council. So, um, Shane, if you could explain briefly, once you uh, get them to, how do you get them to agree um, to, to meet you someplace? How do you document it and What's your goal once you get them there? Um, well, I'll start from the, from the latter end up. Ultimately, the goal is to serve, to have justice served. Ultimately, we would love if we were able to work hand in hand with police, but as these guys said, it's, it's a whole other animal, their end versus my end. But the ultimate goal being a conviction in a court, obviously. But the other goal, which in my opinion is just as important as putting them in jail, is the awareness having them put on the spot, having people like you, 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 whoever else, it's a parent, if not even a parent, just somebody that has a love for children to right. know who so these people are. are you recording? <clears throat> Absolutely. The All right, That's I guess my, my first question about that, uh, you know, because as a, uh, an investigative journalist, yes, um, you know, we have done that a lot, and, but it, the law is different from state to state. What you could do, let's say, in New York or in the Northeast is different than what you could do in Florida. In, in Florida, you have to have two-party consent, meaning you have to tell the person that they're being recorded. Are, are you doing that? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, the first thing, one of the, one of the first things that will come out of my mouth is that I'm recording you with my, either my camera guy or myself holding a camera. I'm recording you for your safety as well as my own, and I have you live on a social media network page. That said, they don't say anything negative, denying, you know, I don't want you to do, there's your consent. Um, have I done them to where they haven't had consent? Absolutely, I have, and I've learned through trial and error. You know, as you said, it is a two-party state, and it is a, a very fine line. In a public setting, though, in a public setting such as a McDonald's or a, you know, on the outside, a McDonald's or a, a local park, to my knowledge, you can record anything you want. I, I believe it was either uh, Kurt or Greg uh, raised the point that, um, when law enforcement does that, their objective is to make an arrest and get that person off the street. Shaming them alone, uh, if you are a pedophile, is often not enough to dissuade you from doing it again. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, it's not awareness to or, or shame to them. It's awareness to the other individuals that live in that area or have the ability to see who that person is. Because you can be, and I'm not, actually let me not use that analogy. Joe Fontenyots can be a pedophile working at the, the local, uh, the local, you know, uh, the local park or whatever, what have you. 
No one knows. No one knows except for his neighbors and the people that hey, he's registered with. I, I guess when uh, Jess Dudrick, or a reporter, contacted the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, they mm -hmm. were pretty vague about whether or not what you're handing over to them is going to result in a criminal prosecution. Yeah, and it is, again, it's a very, very touchy subject. That Now, if we get a person, I've actually had these pedophile animals admit, Yes, I'm here to meet a 16-year-old girl to con engage in consensual, se in, in, in consensual, to engage in sexual activity. Even having that, it's very hard to get a conviction. It's very hard, but Correct. we still turn it over and make them aware. And majority, you know, when we do turn stuff over, because we've heard they hand it to other op um, law offices, not just Hillsborough. Well, Hillsborough's made it a point to say, look, we are not going to work with you, and and I respect that wholeheartedly. I'm still going to do what I do. Because other than that, these pedophiles are sitting at home doing what they're doing, searching for 16-year-olds. I'm a father. I'm not a cop. I'm a father, and I make that known, too. Eckert, as a 28-year police veteran, what's your initial reaction? Well, I, too, am a father, and, and I want the person off the street as much as Shane does. Um, you know, one of the things that's so critically important when we look at it from a law enforcement perspective is the training that our law enforcement agencies here locally and across the country put into training these detectives to do these type of cases. So one of the things that often happens, and, and this, this, this type of activity is nothing new, it was actually very popular in the UK many okay. years ago, and uh, it, it's kind of taken shape here when perverted justice got involved here in, in the United States. But one of the things we like to do, make sure we do, is when we put these the training programs together for our detectives, that we make sure we preserve all that evidentiary value of taking this person's phone and making sure, because oftentimes if we shame them and they run and they take off, yeah. they destroy the evidence. And that lessens our ability to get that conviction and put that person away, and then he's out there and he can do it again. And therein lies the problem with some of this. Uh, Greg, from an evidence point of view, uh, is what Shane is turning over problematic? very problematic and and Kurt is uh, right about the aspect you, if they're publicly shamed they run off and first thing they do is start destroying evidence and so forth and it gets into the problem again of how their conversations initiated who initiated it who said what first and things this goes in all kind of proactive aspects you know from drug deals and stuff like that and we don't have control of that and at what point it becomes problematic that it, it goes from enticement to entrapment and there's we also, lose control. There's also the safety aspect for someone yes. like Shane or somebody who's doing these investigations because a lot of the times they're, they're carrying firearms. Uh, we've seen a number of suicides result from yes. some of the cases like this. So the folks who are out there doing it, while doing it for a good cause and wanting to do the right thing, it can also lead to them being injured and, as your report said earlier, and sued civilly. Shane, have you given that some thought that the guy that you're meeting up with may be packed and loaded? Absolutely. In fact, we, uh, myself and my, my partner, Scott, who is also uh, uh, a decoy, uh, we think about that wholeheartedly. I've actually had officers speak to me for several hours regarding this and almost in the training aspect of speaking, but without saying they train me. I fully am fully knowledgeable in the fact of entrapment versus enticement versus just basic them. The ad that's placed is called catfishing. It's not illegal to catfish. When you catfish, we place an ad, 16-year-old female looking to hang out. That's when you decipher, is this person a, a predator? Is this person, you know, because if they're an, an individual, they're going to flag it. Nobody wants that, you know, to see that up in an adult's platform. However, when that person does make that phone call, on the decoy phone number that we do have. It is logged. We do have it logged through the different platforms that we use. We use Craigslist, we use different ones, and they are logged through email. Right, that but if, you, if you're not working with uh, law enforcement along with the process, mm -hmm. I would imagine a defense attorney uh, would have a field day in terms and of picking it apart. And that's where the problematic does come in, but we do have CIs that work on our team who are registered with different counties, and those CIs, okay, they are admissible evidence holders. Those people uh, that put this to the table, that's so admissible are you, are evidence. So are you saying that you are working with some Not law with, enforcement agencies? We, absolutely. Absolutely. Not Currently have we done any busts or any Stings Wh with agencies? law enforcement? Nobody. Uh, I'm actually not at liberty to say. In fact, it was one thing that they asked me not to do, especially having CIs on my team. CIs are uh, you know, civil informants. The agency, Hillsborough, we are not working with Hillsborough County. They made it adamant to say we do not want anything to do with this because of the problematic causes. The thing is, now I understand on a law enforcement end and the fact that, you know, it does, you know, come into entrapment and this and that. 
on a father on a parental land and I'm not an officer and I can respect the fact that that's what you guys are doing but I am doing this because oh that this person might not be searching uh, we've outed can, them we only have a and few then we've informed law enforcement. We only have a few seconds left in this segment but ha does this happen anywhere? Are there law enforcement agencies out there working with private individuals unconnected to law enforcement to, to do this kind of work? I've known law enforcement agencies that have folks like Shane in their communities that do whether it's online predators or other criminal activity in their community that have worked together with the law enforcement agency. But in most time, the law enforcement agency tries to eventually win it to their, their domain and keep it in-house because of the... Yeah. All right, we have to take a quick break and we'll be back for final thoughts in a moment. I just need a second. Is your weight holding you back and affecting your health? Did you see this? Hmm? Your cousin had a heart attack. Really? Excess weight or obesity can be serious, but you can do something about it. Visit yourweightmatters.org. Download the free toolkit to prepare you to speak with a healthcare provider. Your weight does matter. Accept the challenge and take charge today. Visit yourweightmatters.org. We're losing exotic animals on a daily basis, and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Rosaire from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. The thought of my sons growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors, and then I threw away all my cigarettes, ashtrays, and lighters. I started exercising instead of smoking. Letting my friends online know I was quitting kept me on track. Staying away from alcohol when I was first quitting was key. I kept on trying, learned something each time. Do whatever it takes. No matter how many times it takes. We did it. You can, too. For free help, visit cdc.gov tips. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. I will never accept defeat. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. I will never quit. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at nationalguard.com. Check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com for Chef Judy's favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, step-by-step -step videos, and Suncoast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySuncoast.com slash dining. ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. And our guest joining us right now for Final Thoughts. So, Greg, you, you've heard what, what uh, Shane is doing. What's your conclusion? Well, what I'd like to make the point is the prevention aspect you know we're talking about proactive we don't want to investigate reactively after something happened Shane brought up something good he talked about going on his daughter's phone and looking at the apps that she had and see where she, what she's doing parents have got to do that they got to be involved more in the, the child's connection with social media because there's various problems and this is one of them uh, education in the school uh, to make it very clear these things are out there, you know, these predators are out there and things can happen. So I'd like to s people to focus on the prevention aspect of so, it. So, Kurt, br uh, briefly, if, if you are part of a chat uh, room on Facebook or whatever and it's legitimate but you see suspicious activity, what should you do? Yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're really blessed in the state of Florida and even here locally with, in the Sarasota, Bradenton area in that our law enforcement officers here are well trained through the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. They go through a lot of training for that. So it's striking that right balance between education, as Greg said, and enforcement. All right, Shane, and I'll give you the final word. We only have a couple of seconds Absolutely. left. But having heard what the experts say, does it give you some kind of pause? Uh, I've, or actually, I've actually already had that pause. This isn't the first time I've spoken to professionals like this. I've had the pause. What we do, and if you see what we do online, by checking out the ultimate decoy on Facebook or prank call mafia, you'll see that all of our busts, when I say busts, we're not arresting, but that's what we call it. They're done in a, in a matter to where there is no entrapment, there is nothing else negative, and they're done in a way to where this person 
they do give a confession majority of the time, right. and they're outed. We have to leave it there, gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us. Before we go, we want to share with you what some of you had to say about last night's show on what impact Puerto Ricans moving to Florida may have on future elections. Tens of thousands of Puerto Ricans moved to Florida after Hurricane Maria. If they register to vote in Florida, it can have a huge impact on not only just the Sun Coast, but the entire Sunshine State. We went to Facebook to hear your thoughts, and Ian says, I hope they all get registered to vote. Diane says President Trump gave everything possible for the recovery efforts. Puerto Rico's government is crooked and corrupt and don't care about their people. Patrick responds, wow, this comment made me volunteer to get them registered. Well, if you'd like to join the conversation on tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mysuncoast.com.abc7. And FYI, you can watch past discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. And for the latest on local breaking news, don't forget to download the updated version of our app. If your current app doesn't work, that's because it's expired. Just go to the App Store and re-download it by searching for WWSB or My Suncoast. We want to thank all our guests for being here tonight. Shane Coyle, Greg R. Arnold, professor of criminal justice at State College of Florida, and Kurt Lavarello, executive director of the School Safety Advocacy Council. When we return, we'll have a final look at your first alert weather. Plus, are we less than hours away from the president giving Congress the green light to make the dubious memo containing classified FBI information public? I'm Deshauna Barber. In 2016, I was proud to win the title of Miss USA. What makes me just as proud is my service in the U.S. military. In the service, a soldier gains skills and learns values like discipline and leadership. That makes them an asset to any business that hires them. If you're an employer on behalf of Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, remember to hire smart and bet on a vet. Visit saluteheroes.org or call this number to learn more. Thanks to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, what was once impossible is happening today for thousands of patients with blood cancer. I live. I live. I live. I live. I live. She lives. Because of the research done by the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society in the battle against blood cancer. If you had a chance to support the research that is saving lives, what would you do? Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. Your primetime headlines are coming up in a moment, but right now let's get a final check on the first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. Well, we had some photos sent in, Alan. Here's one right here. This is from Dennis uh, from Palmetto. Beautiful sunset you see right there. Uh, we are looking at high pressure dominating right now, and that means uh, fair conditions overnight with low temperatures dropping down to close to seasonal averages, maybe a little bit above average. There is a frontal system moving through the deep south right now. This cold front doesn't have a lot of punch to it. In fact, the low pressure area is way up to the north of it, so it's going to weaken as it makes its way into our region. The heaviest activity is up north where we're getting some heavy snowfall now into West Virginia, but uh, all in all, high pressure dominating the weather, and this high is going to get bumped off into the Atlantic a little bit, which will allow this front to move in. Uh, it will bring just some cloudiness. Get a look at the future cast. This is our in-house model showing you the uh, front coming down and basically losing any kind of rain, uh, but it does still contain some cloudiness and uh, slightly cooler temperatures behind it, but not really cold. And you'll see that by Saturday, we start to see these clouds, these low clouds moving from the east to the west. That indicates that we're not going to see that north push of air, which really brings the cold air our way. So a quick warm up on Saturday. We'll be back in the low 70s, but notice a lot of clouds out here gathering in the Gulf and over the state. So Saturday will be OK. Uh, in terms of uh, no real threat of any rainfall, but it will be a mixture of sun and clouds throughout the day. Currently at 64, 
We have fair skies and the dew point temperature at 53. Winds out of the north northwest at 6. And the temperatures look like this tomorrow. Another gorgeous day. Low 70s, partly cloudy skies. Maybe a little increase in clouds late in the day. And uh, that should say Friday. I hope it's Friday tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's high temperatures will only be into the teens in Minneapolis. Look at that. And 22 in Chicago. Uh, 15 in Toronto. That cold Arctic air is going to stay to the north of us. It's going to drop a little bit off to the south and then push off to the east. Then another little vortex of cold air will slide down, looks like, late next week. So for boaters, winds out of the north at 5 to 10 knots. Seas will be running right around 2 feet. There will be a light chop on the bays and inland waters. The water temperature now at 61 degrees. UV index will be a 7 and we're expecting beaches to see a high right around 71 degrees. So let's get a look at the forecast then. Uh, for tomorrow, Groundhog's Day, it looks like um, the Groundhog and Punxsutawney Phil will not see a shadow. There's a 93% chance that there'll be clouds around then. We also have a big event taking place uh, on Lakewood Ranch. Uh, we have Music on Main and the weather forecast for Music on Main looking pretty good. Uh, partly cloudy skies at the start of the music at 6 p.m. goes until 9. Should be down into the low 60s by the time it wraps up. And the band will be Lisa Ridings. And as far as Sunday's forecast goes, again, another forecast model is suggesting that we will see uh, basically some showers to the north of us on Sunday morning. Uh, for us, uh, basically Sunday morning looks to be good. And then as we approach the afternoon, say 2, 3 o'clock, some showers start to move in. Uh, that rain chance, though, is only at 40%, and that, too, is expected to break up as it moves through. Temperature's still warm on Sunday at 76 degrees. And, Alan, I bet you didn't know this. This is a big day for us on Monday. Okay, Monday is a big day, and you wouldn't know it, but that's National Weather Person's Day. I expect a card from you, Alan. Uh, obviously, balloons. <laughs> balloons. balloons. Maybe. Ice cream, I know, is coming to the station. Uh, this is John Jeffrey's birthday back in 1774. He was the first weatherman up in the Northeast United States. Well, it wasn't the United States then, but the first man up there uh, to take, um, basically, weather observations. Weather balloon. Launch a balloon. Well, have him on the trapezoid. Yeah, put him on the trapezoid. <laughs> there you go. Al will be back with primetime headlines right after this. This is an important medical announcement. Barred IVC filters have been linked to punctured veins and problems with migration. Anyone who's received a barred IVC filter must receive medical monitoring and may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you have the Bard Recovery G2 or G2 Express filter, you are in a class of patients who should be compensated for some expenses. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to people who should have been warned about the risks of the Bard IVC filters. Call the IVC filter hotline if you or a loved one has received an IVC filter and experienced a vein puncture or required medical monitoring. You must call now. Call 800-329-3089. 800-329-3089. Our nation's servicemen and women show great courage and leadership both on and off the battlefield. When they transition to civilian life, they can apply the skills and values they learned in the military to the workplace. That's why the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes is urging employers everywhere to be smart, bet on a vet. Hiring a veteran is also a great way to show your appreciation for them. To learn more, call 1-888-44-SALUTE. All right, crew, let's get started. Sure. Don't ignore the law. You must call 811 at least two to three days before any digging project so you can avoid hitting our essential buried utilities. For digging projects big or small, make the call to 811. This is your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Um, yeah, I have questions. Prescription drugs aren't as bad as street drugs, right? Weed's legal, isn't it? Drinking is worse than smoking weed. Isn't it? Why it is heroin, heroin so, so addictive? Molly just makes you feel happy. I have questions. Mom? Dad, did you ever try drugs? They're going to ask. Be ready. Go to drugfree.org. A message from Partnership for Drug-Free Kids.
Checking primetime headlines as the Russia investigation heats up, there is a showdown in Washington between the White House, congressional Republicans, and the FBI over classified material. A senior White House official says the president will likely give Congress the okay tomorrow to make a dubious memo about the FBI public. ABC's Tara Palmieri has more. The memo was written by Republican staffers on the House Intel Committee. It apparently argues that the FBI abused its authority when it obtained a warrant to tap the phones of a campaign aide to Donald Trump. For anybody to be able to spy on American citizens, you should have a very, very high bar to be able to satisfy before you, you do that. In a rare statement, the FBI wrote that they have, quote, grave concerns about making the memo public. In a break with the House GOP, the third ranking Republican in the Senate asked that the Senate Intel Committee read it first before the president tells Congress to release it. What this memo is, is Congress doing its job in conducting legitimate oversight. On Tuesday, President Trump seemed eager to get the memo out. Let's release the memo. Oh, yeah, oh, don't worry. Yeah, 100%. Democratic leaders have asked House Speaker Paul Ryan to intervene and stop its release. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi is now demanding that the House Intel Chairman Devin Nunes be removed from the committee. Ranking Democratic member Adam Schiff accused Nunes of changing the memo after the Intel Committee voted on its release. The memo is seriously uh, misleading because it omits very material information um, and has deep factual inaccuracies. And what the White House is considering is not um, precisely what we voted out and it just goes to show you the problems when you are doing this for partisan reasons. Democrats have called the memo a cover-up campaign and a partisan ploy to cast doubt on the Russia investigation. The committee vote on releasing the memo was along party lines. Tara Palmieri, ABC News, Washington. And this happened again, this time in Los Angeles. Five people were hurt when a student opened fire inside a middle school classroom. One of the victims, a 15-year-old boy, was shot in the head. He is in critical but stable condition and expected to make a full recovery. A 15-year-old girl was shot in the wrist. The other injuries were minor. The suspected shooter, a 12-year-old female student, is in custody. The shooting happened at Sal Castro Middle School, just miles northwest of downtown L.A. It's a tradition, a halftime interview with the president during the Super Bowl, but not this year. President Trump is not participating in the Super Bowl Sunday interview this weekend. NBC had requested the interview. The president turned it down. The network is televising the Super Bowl on Sunday from Minneapolis, where the New England Patriots will face, against, face off against the Philadelphia Eagles. When Fox televised the Super Bowl last year, Trump did sit down with Fox's Bill O'Reilly at the White House. And that's all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night.